Hi, it's Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. And this video is about you are probably diabetic unless. And I'm going to go over um, what that means. And I'm also going to show you a graph that shows how prevalent diabetes is. But we need to redefine what diabetes actually is and how you find it. So I got this book right here, Diabetes Epidemic and You by Dr. Kraft. And what he's saying, I'm going to hit some, some big points right now. Then we'll get into some details. But what he's saying, you've heard of insulin resistance. What that is, is hyperinsulinemia. So here's a graph that shows different patterns of high insulin over the course of three hours after drinking a lot of sugar. So hyperinsulinemia is the same as insulin resistance, is the same as type 2 diabetes. Now, when you look at uh, hyperglycemia, how much blood is in the, sh how much sugar is in the blood, that's kind of irrelevant according to the studies, and it was shown uh, even back in 1977 that hyperglycemia has very little to do with placking of the arteries and the destruction of the tissues that diabetics get when their um, disease is out of control. So. Blood glucose and other factors are not valuable for the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. Now I'm going to read some uh, lines straight out of the book to give you more clarity on all of this. And before I do that, I want to say that regarding blood sugar, um, people ask me on my YouTube channel, what's normal? Well, let me tell you this. In this book, it talks about how in the United States, normal blood sugar was 100. This is a few decades ago. It was 100, but in Europe, it was 50. So they just compromised and they made it 75. So it's, it sort of shows you that blood sugar doesn't really mean much. Insulin means more. And what brings down insulin is ketosis. So you're probably diabetic unless you've done things to, to control the amount of insulin in your blood, especially ketosis. That's the main way to, to reverse that. Okay, so um, on page 49 of this book, Dr. Kraft says, the arterial wall is an insulin-sensitive tissue. Animal experimentation showed that chronic exposure to high concentrations of insulin resulted in the development of lipid-filled lesions similar to those of early atherosclerosis. There is little evidence that hyperglycemia directly contributes to the development of atherosclerosis. So, diabetics die of heart conditions, primarily. The pathology of diabetes is vascular. And this guy named Dr. Stout in 1977 identified the origin of the pathology as arterial or vascular, directly related to high insulin and not to hyperglycemia. And it goes like this. We have number one cardiovascular disease, including coronary artery disease, so the arteries around the heart, congestive heart failure, which is a lack of circulation throughout the whole body, swelling of the ankles, etc., high blood pressure, idiopathic cardiomyopathy, which means that the heart disease, the heart itself, the muscle, is starting to uh, disintegrate, and coronary microvascular dysfunction, so the teeny tiny um, vascular tissues, the little arteries inside the musculature of the heart also become dysfunctional. So that's cardiovascular disease. Number two, we have cerebral vascular disease, that means in the brain, stroke, and transient ischemic attacks, which is like a mini stroke. Next, we have nef nephropathy, meaning kidneys. So we get hypertension. The kidneys control the amount of fluid in the body and in the arteries. So when they don't work very well, you can get a buildup of fluid in your arteries, leading to hypertension. And nephrosclerosis, which means the kidney arteries are diseased. Next, we have retinopathy. That's the vision going. That's the eyes. And then neuropathy, that's the tingling of the feet, that's the nerves, the nervous system, including the autonomic nervous system, which means the heartbeat. Uh, autonomic means the self-regulating self nervous system of the body. So people's heart starts flipping and they get weird beats. That's the autonomic nervous system affecting the heartbeat. Peripheral nervous system, so tingling of the fingers and toes, and then central nervous system. And next we get peripheral arterial disease. You may have heard of this, PAD. So lack of circulation to the feet. That's why people have to get their feet and legs cut off if they're diabetic and they don't control it. And then we got erectile dysfunction. So these are all circulatory problems 
and nerve problems caused by diabetes. So the way that you test this is by doing a three hour postprandial glucose and insulin test. And I want to share with you, actually Dr. Kraft did this on himself once he figured this all out. Over the course of 25 years, he continually tested his blood sugar and blood insulin postprandial, so three hours after eating sugar. And this is what he says. Um, his first test, he showed that he was type 2 diabetic and he was overweight. So he controlled his diet, and I don't think he knew exactly how to control the diet correctly, meaning ketosis, because he was in and out of type 2 diabetes for 25 years, meaning his insulin was too high uh, too often. So he says the variations were directly related to a weight fluctuation of 5 to 10 pounds. So if he was up 5 pounds or maybe 10 pounds, that means his insulin was too high. He had to drop his weight down. Now this book is from 07, and he's saying, even with my last test, he was type 2 diabetic. And he says, I had numerous lipid profile examinations, meaning total cholesterol, LDL, etc. My total cholesterols were less than 160, which is really good, and HDL and LDL cholesterols were considered ideal. On January 9th, 2007, my total cholesterol was 142 with an HDL of 79. Now, those are really good numbers. But his insulin was too high. He was type 2 diabetic. So blood glucose and other factors like LDL, cholesterol, um, total cholesterol, HDL, are not valuable for the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. So here's a great sentence on page 72. Normal weight, normal BMI, normal fasting blood sugar, and normal fasting insulins do not exclude hyperinsulinemia, otherwise known as type 2 diabetes. So he's saying if even if you just study fasting insulin, that's not good enough. You have to see how the body reacts, how the insulin goes up over the course of three hours after consuming the 75 or 100 milligrams of sugar that they make you take in the lab when they're running this test on you. So you want the insulin to start off at a low rate, low number, and then it can't go up too high, and it can't be too high for too long either. It's got to start off low and stay in a normal range, and I have a video on that. The other thing he's saying is that if you have heart disease, or if you're obese, or if you have essential hypertension, which means unknown cause of hypertension, if you have any of those three, you have to assume your insulin is too high, and then you can rule out other things, but first assume the insulin is too high. I made some slides I want to show you. This first one says hyperinsulin is insulin resistance, which is type 2 diabetes. So the next slide, actually next two slides, show over 14,000 Americans by age measuring their blood glucose versus hyperinsulinism compared to 2007 standards. This is the main study that takes up the bulk of this book, Diabetes Epidemic in You, by Dr. Kraft. So the blue line shows the percentage of Americans by age in this study, over 14,000 people, they had normal blood glucose tolerance on a three hour postprandial test. So they ate a bunch of sugar and they measured their blood sugar for the next three hours. And then the green shows the percentage of that population in the same blood test that had hyperinsulinism. So at between the age of three to 13, we had 50% of the people had too much insulin. And then between the age of 14 and 20, it was uh, 80%. And then by, by the time you hit 21 to 30, it was up 81%. And it stayed between 80 to 90% all the way to the age of 90. So 80 to 90% of Americans in adulthood have type 2 diabetes. I took the same data and turned it into a bar graph. So every green bar that goes up is a percentage of Americans by age with type 2 diabetes. And that's why at the beginning of this video, I called the title, You Are Probably Diabetic, unless you actually are getting in and out of ketosis to control your insulin. And throughout my career, I've pondered this idea that the body is very strong and yet at the same time it's very fragile. Well, having read this book and looking at the data, the answer is it's actually very, very fragile. And it's this bar graph that shows it. So for 50% of Americans between the age of 3 and 13, 
with type 2 diabetes because of our diet, then you can see the fragility. But the disease doesn't manifest usually until the age of 40 or 50. And the blue line shows how having normal blood sugar is very deceptive. And it doesn't mean that you don't have type 2 diabetes. The blue line also shows that high blood sugar is a late manifestation of high insulin. It can occur years and years, like 12 years later, after high insulin is a problem. Since 80% of Americans over the age of 14 have type 2 diabetes, that just shows how important ketosis is and how it needs to be part of our lifestyle. This is very heavy information, but it's far-reaching, meaning that it explains why our medical system is failing and it's so expensive and never getting to the cause and people keep gaining weight. And there's more and more medications being prescribed. And there's no health being attained. It's just managing diseases and lab reports. So I'm not, again, I'm not going to ask you if you like this information. <laughs> but if you find it valuable, then please give me a thumbs up, share, and subscribe.